Thank you so much for joining today or this evening, depending on where you're calling from. This is Jeremy Schiefling at Khan Academy, and I'm so excited that you're joining with us because if anything, at Khan Academy, 2020 has been the year of the tablet. We've given away, by my calculation, at least 50 tablets over the course of the year in response to questions like, how does Sal Khan make those videos? How can I make my own videos? And that's why I'm so excited about tonight's session, because now you're gonna learn from the experts themselves. First of all, we are so lucky to have Stacy with us. Um, Stacy is a math teacher and director of innovation and educational technology at the Bullis School in Maryland. And one of the things that really impresses me is not only does she wear multiple hats at school, but she's also the author of Tech with Heart, which is an amazing book on how to use tech in your classroom, not just to break your students down into bits and bytes, but to actually empower them, to lift them up. And I think in 2020, I can't imagine a better lesson than how to use technology in a more holistic way. So check out Tech with Heart, we make a great stocking stuffer. And then also I have to give a huge shout out to the Wacom team. Um, if you're familiar with Wacom the brand, they are the world's leader in handwriting tablets. So whether you use it for design or for teaching, there's just these really powerful tools to bring your teaching style and your pedagogy into the digital world. And in fact, Sal Khan himself has been using their tablets for a decade at this point, um, and is still using them to make videos at this very moment. So a huge shout out to the Wacom team, and especially because Wacom has been generous enough to give away five more tablets to lucky attendees tonight. Um, and you'll be notified automatically just for being in attendance if you're one of those lucky five. And then in addition, even if you're not selected to win a tablet, Wacom is giving an exclusive discount code just to attendees of this session that Stacy will unveil at the very end of the presentation. Now, all that being said, I would be remiss in 2020 on a webinar, not to mention that number one, this is being recorded. So you'll get all those goodies in your email right afterwards, including a PDF of the handouts and all the links that we talked about. And then of course, because we're educators um, all in all, we wanna make sure the session is really interactive. So ask questions at any point using the questions tab and Stacy will take a ton of those questions at the end of the session. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Stacy to tell you all about how you can use tablets in your own classroom to make 2021 even more effective. Over to you, Stacy. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be with you all this evening or whatever time it is over on your end. Um, so I'm going to be sharing some ways that you can use the tablet. Um, I have been using a Wacom tablet myself uh, for years now. I think I got my first one in 2013. And uh, what I love about these tablets is that it's the same tablet that I was using in 2013. I'm still able to use today, though I'm gonna showcase some of their newer products. Um, it has worked for me over the years and it's a way of allowing me to handwrite on anything. And as a math teacher, I need that. Um, so in addition to my role in really working as a coach with us, uh, with teachers at my school and helping them onboard the tech that will work best for their classroom. I'm also an AP calculus teacher. So I've taught a number of classes over the year, but in the past several years, I've taught AP calculus AB. I also taught a purely online version of AP calculus AB for a number of years. And I am a flipped classroom teacher. So I'll get into a lot of how I started exploring the tablets and how I'm using them now, and hopefully some easy ways to help you get started. If you are on Twitter, I would love to connect with you. My Twitter hashtag is, or my Twitter handle is at BuddyXO. Um, so if you are there, please connect with me. And if you have any questions at all, I'm so happy to follow up um, and answer as many as I can. I do have a contact form on my blog. So now that we're done with that little intro, let's go ahead and um, let me start off with some of the things I hope to achieve today. First of all, how to get started with a whiteboard application. Then um, how to use a scratch pad in Khan Academy. Then we'll talk more about how to ink up slides and make screencasts of your own. And then, as Jeremy said, we will have some time for Q&A. So before we get started, I'm going to just put a question out to you. What subject do you teach and what grade levels do you teach? You can go ahead and type that in. 
Okay, we've got the poll on your screen, so feel free to start answering right there. Um, about a third of the 500 or so educators across the country have answered. We're up to about two thirds now. And it looks like there are a lot of educators who are following in your footsteps, Stacey, because as we close the poll and share the results, you can see that a plurality are math educators. Awesome. And now well, we'll do the same. Hopefully. That's right. But also a nice diversity of educators across the content spectrum. Let's do the same for grade level now. So elementary all the way to high, maybe even beyond or before. And it's looking like a little bit of a horse race between middle and high school. And we'll go ahead and share that. And it looks like a lot of high school educators, again, um, your tribe is here in force tonight, Stacy. So a lot of high school math educators have joined us. All right. We'll Good. have some fun tonight. So this is me um, back in the day. Let me go back into present. Um, this is me back in the day when I started flipping my classroom. This was back in 2010. And um, what, you, what I had here was a tablet PC, actually. So this is how I got started making my videos. I had a microphone that I got, and I was using my tablet PC, which is what we had through our school. That was kind of how I got interested in the first place. I said, hey, I got this technology in my hands. Let me start making some screencasts for my students, especially when I started AP Calculus teaching. You know how much content there is to get through, not enough time to get through it. So I wanted a way to offload that very teacher-directed lecture to video, and I started using my tablet PC to do that. However, I am a Mac user, um, and this tablet PC wasn't my preference. So um, when I learned about Wacom, then I had my solution because I could plug the tablet into my Mac and I still had the pen and the handwriting and I've been happily using that solution ever since. So um, there are two main types of Wacom devices. There is the slate style, like this one in the left. So this is a blank slate and you can write just looking up at the screen is what you would have to do there so that you're not seeing what you're writing. Actually, you're looking up at the screen to see what you're writing. And then there's also the display style tablets like this one where you actually either mirror your screen or you use it as a second display, just like if you had another monitor attached. So that is really amazing, especially in remote learning. I think we've all learned that we need two monitors. And so this can be a simple way to have two monitors available to you or two screens available to you. So I um, really recommend the Wacom Intuos. There are different styles of it, but I like the one, this is the small one that I have. It's a small style, but it is Bluetooth. And I love that because it's wireless and I can move it around, easy to carry with me. Um, it, when we are in the actual classroom and we're able to move around, this is a great device to have, throw it in your bag. And then the Wacom One is what I actually make my flip classrooms video clip classroom videos with nowadays, you do have to plug it in. So it is much larger. I have it right here. I don't have it plugged in because I didn't want another uh, screen going right now. But um, this is really great because I can have it to write out all of my lessons, make my screen recordings, and it feels so natural. It really feels like writing on paper. The quality of this tablet is amazing. Um, and I recommend the Wacom One because it's the lowest price point for a screen display style tablet that Wacom offers. And it's met all of my needs as a math teacher, 100%, and it feels so, so nice to write on. So those are the two style of tablets. I just wanted to throw those out there for some background. And then I'm gonna pose one more question to you right now. Do you currently have a writing tablet? So I think there's a poll that you can answer on this one. And it looks like we're up to about almost 90% of the votes here, Stacey. Um, and it looks like about 
um, as you can see here on the screen, um, about a third of teachers um, had that writing tablet already, but the majority do not. So just a little good background to go on. Awesome. So hopefully that um, some of that background was helpful in helping you understand the different styles of tablets that are available and which one you might want to purchase going forward. If you really just are looking to get, get started with the most affordable option um, and the most portable option, that is the Intuo style tablet. And again, there's a Bluetooth version of that, which is what I really like because I can just be using it, just click a button, no wires needed, and I can move around and it's wireless. Um, again, the Wacom One, I love it for making my flip classroom videos. It does need to be plugged in. So I just like to mention that because I think it's important to weigh the options. Do you need portability or are you gonna be making videos all the time? Um, in which case, I think the Wacom One is really worth the investment. That's what I use um, most of my time and I just love it. All right. So let's continue on and start with some of the basics. So I wish that I could just tell you, hey, this is what I recommend. This is what you should do. But the reality is, we are all at different schools that use different technologies that have different subscriptions, but also we're at Google schools, we are at Microsoft schools, we are at Google Meet schools, we are at Zoom schools right now. And so I am going to present, again, a variety of options, ones that I would most recommend depending on which of those camps you fall into. So if you are using Google everything already, if you're using Google Meet, um, even if you're using Zoom and your school is a Google school, I think Google Jamboard is the simplest whiteboarding option that I can possibly offer you. There is a video of how the Google Meet integration with the um, Jamboard whiteboard works if you haven't used that before. And again, these resources are available after and I put a little play button so that you can know that you can watch this video afterwards if you wanna review it. I've trying to load you up with some resources to really help you out. But I'm gonna show you just a basic demo and you can get started by just going to your Google Drive, pressing the new button, go into more and then using a Google Jamboard and that's how you start up a new whiteboard or if you're in a Google Meet, you'll see that option right when you click the three dots. So let me show you what a Jamboard looks like. It is super simple, super basic, but it is, collaborative or it can be just more instructional. So like anything else in Google, you can share this and make everybody else an editor or you can share it with view only permissions. If everybody else is an editor, it's real time collaboration. Amazing, right? So there is a pen tool right here. And again, the options with this one are very, very simple. You only have a couple palettes of color here. You do have different pen thicknesses. Uh, you have a marker, you have a highlighter, uh, you have more of a brush tool. And so, you know, you can just very simply get to writing. If you wanna write, you can also pull in an image. So sometimes I like to use this to say, you know, you have a question that you want, take a snapshot of the question, pull it into here and then just use your tablet and write. That's basically it. Um, and you can present during class with this also. There's this nice laser pointer so it's easier for students to follow what you are writing and you can more easily point. Uh, there's a sticky note that you can have and then for all my um, people who need some shapes, there's some basic shapes here available too. So this I think is one of the simplest options available. It is automatically built into Google Meet if you're using that or if you're using Google Drive, um, sorry, if you're Google School, then this will save to your Google Drive. So that's the nice ability there too, and you can share. Lastly, you can always export this, save this as a PDF afterwards so that you can share these as lesson notes. If you can't get everything on one slide, you can make multiple pages just like that. Um, and so those are the very, very basics of getting started with this. And there's also the ability to um, have some grid paper background also. So let me go ahead and move into the next option, which um, 
since I was on Google schools, and this one is really, I feel like if you are a Google school that is already a Kami user, if you are using Kami, or if your school has a site license to Kami, I really recommend checking that tool out. Um, if you've not heard about it before, it's not, the, it's not the absolute thing that you need right now. I want you to pick which one is going to fit your needs the best. But what Kami is, it's integrated again with Google Drive, but it also can be kind of just a whiteboarding tool because there are these amazing pen tools built right into Kami. Um, this is a Chrome extension, by the way, you can get it so you can open any of your Google Drive files with Kami. You can also just go to Kami on the web and you can write. So again, I can just write and talk. Um, there's so many more features available into Kami. I could do a whole webinar on Kami, to be honest. Uh, there is even the ability to make your whole screen capture right here in Kami if you have a paid version. But what I like to show here is just like this, for example, was um, I was just showing how students can kind of upload work that they were stuck on and then they can pull it all into a document and then I can use the pen tools like I used right here to guide to say where they went wrong. For example, we can discuss errors as a class. Um, so again, this is one of the really nice uh, whiteboarding tool. You can add extra pages as you go. When you wanna add more pages, again, if you need lined paper, you can have that. If you need grid paper, you can have that. If you want a music sheet, you can even add that. Um, so if you are using Kami already and you haven't thought about using it as kind of a whiteboarding tool, that's gonna be my recommendation to you. Um, and that's really, again, if you're a Google school, because that's tied with Google. So let's move on from Google schools. Um, and if you are using Zoom, Zoom has a whiteboard built right in. So I have a demo here. Um, again, if you want to watch this after the fact, you can just press play and watch how to get started with the tool, but it is one of the simplest options available. And what's more in Zoom, you can actually write anywhere on your screen. So it doesn't have to just be a whiteboard that you're writing on. You can ink up anything using the annotation tools that are in Zoom. So if you haven't used that before, and if you're using Zoom, then again, you use your Wacom tablet. Now you have an actual pen and you can be handwriting instead of you know just using your mouse, which is very difficult. So that Zoom, again, if you're using that, I would definitely check out this video if you're not already. Final whiteboarding tool that I'm gonna showcase is if you want something that's not tied to Google and not tied to Zoom, but is very simple to get started with, I like Awe app, which is um, for a, right here, a web whiteboard, and I'm just using it for free. So you do get advertisements. That is the only downside to this. Um, but otherwise, it can be a collaborative board. So I can invite other people to it. So it can be collaborative, or I can just be doing my screen share and writing. There are some more options in this one. So this is actually a tool that I use quite often because um, it's simple, but also there's a little bit more functionality. So I can upload a picture or even a PDF. I usually just would upload like a picture of a question that I want to solve as a class. And then I can choose from more of a variety of color palettes right here, or you can choose from the color wheel so you can get more colors right there available to you. There's an undo button very easily. Um, and then again, you can be writing as you're talking. You have the eraser tool, and this one gives you a variety of options here where like you can change the size of the eraser. Um, you can also like erase the whole thing in one click, which makes it a little bit easier to use than just erasing little bit by little bit especially when you're doing like a whole lesson. It's, I know it sounds minor, but it can be very helpful. Uh, again, you have some shape tools and then you have some text. Uh, what I like about this app too, is that as you're writing, so you, know, you can be doing a problem, um, let me change the color, like over here, 
And then what you can do is you can actually zoom in and out and you can write on different parts of the board. So I can be zooming out, I can move my right over here too. Then I can move my whole board over. So I just have, this is kind of like a huge canvas that I can have um, and I can keep writing and if I want to see everything, a snapshot of everything at the end of class, I can zoom way out. I can do full screen um, and I can move around a little bit more easily with this little mini map tool here. So it's, again, one of those that you can explore a little bit more. But I I really like this one. It's very simple, but also a little bit more robust in terms of being um you know, kind of like that canvas feel, which I like. If, you know, I want to solve a big problem and I don't have enough retail space on my screen, I can play a little bit more with some of these options. So that is Awe app. And again, there's a paid version or a free version. I'm just using the free one. All right. Ms. Nisi, as you go into the next section, I just want to give a shout out. You're getting so much love on the chat. People are saying, oh, I love Cami. I love... Jamboard, I love awe. So everyone is sharing their favorite tools and there are even some additional ones that are popping up. So thank you for sparking a good conversation. Oh, fantastic. I know, and that's the hardest thing. I want to come on here and like make this as simple as possible for everybody and say, you know, like this is the best one. But the problem is there isn't a best one. And as you can probably see that coming into the chat, there's probably a lot of conversation about what people love. Um, and so again, I encourage you to kind of think about what tools your school's already using. Um, and maybe there's one that already resonates with you, but also like getting students on it more easily. If you're already a Google school, Jamboard is going to be super simple for you and for your students. If your students are already using Cami. That's going to be super simple to them. You know, at this point, I don't want to present too many more tools um, in my classroom because we already went through, you know, kind of some of the pain, uh, the growing pains of getting on board. And that's always the hardest part. Now we're in a routine. So, um, all right. So let's go ahead and dig into using the scratch pad in Khan Academy in case you're not using that already. So I'm going to go ahead right now. Actually, let me go back and just tell you what I'm going to talk about. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is using it in the student view. So this would be from the assign tab. And this is something that students also have access to. So even if they don't have a device, you know, even if they just need to use their mouse, they can at least ink up a little bit as they're thinking through things, which I know is very difficult, um, but you as a teacher can also use it. So let me show you what I mean. So if I am in that assign tab right here, and then I click on to any of the assignments that I have given. So let me go ahead and click into this exercises. And then if I click on student view, so say, for example, I just want to do like an introductory lesson. I found some really nice questions that were in Khan Academy. I don't want to assign them for students yet to do on their own. I want to just have a class conversation about it. I can go ahead and pull this up on the board. And then if you click on here, the little whiteboarding tool, then you'll see that, again, I get kind of like my grid paper, which I know we love as math teachers, and um, I can just mark it up. So, you know, I can be writing and talking. I think there's real power in being able to highlight while I'm talking, being able to write so students can follow what I'm doing. So I'm saying, you know, the limit as X approaches negative two. So now I'm telling everybody, you know, pull your eye to negative two here. And again, it's just this quick little visual of like what's going on. So I can pull that out for them and then say, you know, well, what do you see going on from the left hand side? And I can just be drawing and talking at the same time. And then my students can maybe unmute their mic, chat it out. We can talk about it. And then, you know, just what's happening from the right hand side. And so we can 
discuss it. And I think that just makes for a really nice little discussion. And then we can choose the answer together. So this is, again, this could be used for class instruction, or maybe you assign something and students got something wrong. You could pull this up. Um, or you could have them pull it up on their screen share and ask them to kind of use these tools to try and explain what they were thinking so that you can work through it and coach them uh, together. So that's a really nice little tool in case you haven't used it before. And then the other way that I wanted to show it is after students have responded, so say that you already gave an assignment, everybody did it for homework, now you wanna discuss it in class. You can use a teacher report. And again, there is a drawing tool that's available more on a sidebar in this case. So let me go ahead and go back. And this time, I'm gonna go ahead and go into my scores. And let me click on this. So now if we're reviewing all students here, say that I want to discuss this one because one person got it wrong. So I can go ahead and pull up the draw tool right here and then I can just write on the side. So again, super simple. I can't draw on the drawing itself in this case, but uh, here was an example that I just laid out right here. For example, you know, you might say, what are the three things that you are looking for here? And I could just write that out and I'm able, I'm able to write that out because I have the pen tool on my Wacom tablet. If I was using my mouse, I would not be able to write that out. So again, that can be a really nice way to just talk about things in class. So those are my two favorite ways of using the whiteboard uh, in right within Khan Academy to bring things out during class or to do kind of one-on-one -on -one individualized coaching with students also. So let me pause again and see if there's any questions coming in before we get into some simple screencasting options. Yeah, so there are so many questions, Stacey. What I would recommend is why don't we finish up the content and then okay. save maybe like 10, 15 minutes to really dig deep into these questions. Sounds good to me. All right, so again, I'm presenting four options here depending on what you need for screencasting. When it comes to screencasting, there are a lot of options out there. I'm gonna say, if, again, if you're a Google school already using Google Meet, and if you already have the ability to record, not everybody has the ability to record in Google Meet, but if you have the ability to record in Google Meet, you would see it under your three dots and you would be able to record. Everybody who's using Google for education right now should be able to record in Google. They've made that available for this year. Um, so if you're doing that for class already, you know what? You can join a Google Meet, just you and yourself, and make a nice little screencast because you will have created a video, right? So you could just join the Google Meet all by yourself. You can open up, pop open a Jamboard, for example, and use the whiteboarding. There you go. Simple whiteboard screencast that you can then, it will upload it to your Google Drive, and then you can give it to students to go ahead and review. If you are using Zoom, there's the record option right in Zoom. So you could use the whiteboarding tool again, right in Zoom, and you can just record. Let's keep it simple. Um, if you are wanting a Chrome extension, there are a couple. You may have used Screencastify or Loom. Um, they're both very similar. I usually recommend Loom because it is free for educators. Um, Screencastify has a limit for what you can do with the free version. So that's why I say Loom. If you sign up as an educator, not everybody knows about that. There's an educator form that you can fill out, in which case you get free access to Loom. So that does allow you to do both like, you know, the little video and your screencast at the same time, or you can just do the screencast. You get to choose what you want to do there, uh, screen only, screen and cam, and you can record. Again, you can upload that like to your Google Drive. You have some different options there. And then lastly, I'm going to present one paid option, which, which is Camtasia. And I present that because that's actually what I use to record my videos. That's what I've been using for um, since 2010. Actually, I use that to record my videos and I use that to edit my videos. So that's what I like about that is that 
It does have a pretty robust editor also. I can add in like little uh, annotations at the end. I can cut things if I made a mistake. I can um, do some transitions all of that good stuff. So if you want to invest a little bit more time and energy into creating videos and editing them, if that's something that you enjoy, I really enjoy editing my videos, then I would recommend looking into a Camtasia license and make sure that you look for an educator discount on that because they do have some educator discounts available. Um, but that is a paid option and it is available for both a PC or a Mac. So, um, I am going to keep this as simple as possible. Again, um, one of the easiest ways to start inking up anything is to use PowerPoint actually. And there is a pen tool available even in PowerPoint online. So I'm gonna show you PowerPoint online because this is how I actually got started with things. I just opened up a PowerPoint. Like I had my PowerPoint as my base, my presentation, I had a question and a lot of blank white space, as you can see here. That's kind of what it looked like. Whatever's in red is what I wrote while I was making the screencast itself. And so when you do this in PowerPoint, it's going to save all the annotations too. So then you have a kind of a final version and I usually save my original version and I um, usually I print out the blank version for my students so that they can take notes right on the PowerPoint as they're watching the video. And then you can just go ahead and go to this drawing tab. I'm in PowerPoint online here. And then you go to the drawing tab and you can choose from a bunch of different colors. And it's nice that it has your recent colors that are saved right here. You can change the thickness of the pen tool. Um, and then and you can also use this different pen tool. They're a little bit different. And um, have the colors. You have the eraser. You have a highlighter and you can just get started with making a screencast. So again, you could open this up, then use one of the screencasting tools we talked about. So you could open up a Google Meet with you yourself and um, press record. You can open up a Zoom and record yourself. You could also use Screencastify. I use Camtasia. When I use Camtasia, something else I like about that is I can just like choose what portion of the screen I wanna record. So I would just like select this portion of the screen with my, um, mouse you know so it would like record just this portion and then um obviously i was not using my tablet there so it was very messy but uh i would just record that portion and you wouldn't be able to see any of the background stuff and so a lot of the different um tools allow you to choose just a piece of your screen instead of recording the entire screen so that's something to keep in mind also loom has that ability i know so yeah that's the easiest way to honestly to get started here PowerPoint, you use it and it's all free. If you have PowerPoint, like the desktop version, um, this is coming to Mac. I don't think it's rolled out to everybody. I know I'm in a program where I get some early releases of things. So it is available on, I am using it on my Mac right now. There is a record slideshow. It's been available on a PC for years. If you have PowerPoint downloaded to your computer, you can actually, it's a one-stop shop where you can create a video um, and record your screen right using PowerPoint all in one, like you don't even need a second tool. If that's something that interests you, I have a reference article and also a video tutorial that is a Windows specific one, um, but it should be similar for the Mac starting soon. Anyway, I just wanted to present that as an option if you're using PowerPoint. This is something that a lot of people aren't aware of. It, again, it's a record slideshow. It's right baked into PowerPoint and you can export it as a MP4 if you want students to watch it as a video or you can also give a share link and that share link is kind of like um kind of like if I shared these Google Slides with you right now where students can press like the next button and the next button, but it will play like a video. It's really cool. Um, I encourage you to check it out if you are a PowerPoint fan. If you're not though, I've provided some other options for you to explore today. So um, I did wanna show you my actual process. Um, and this is a video of my actual process. These days I use Notability on my Mac. I pay for that. Um, it wasn't very expensive, but I did purchase Notability, which is, uh, you might be familiar, there is an iOS um, 
application for Notability, but there's also a Mac application. And I just like it as like, I have it as my digital notebook. So that's what I'm using these days. But honestly, I start off with a PowerPoint and you can replicate the same thing in PowerPoint. And I use Camtasia to make my screen recordings. Then I upload those for students to watch. So again, if you wanna see my exact process, that video is available. All right. Last, I think this is like almost my last question for you. How many Flipgrid fans do I have here today? Okay, so let's cue this one up here. Um, so we launched the Flipgrid poll. And it's looking like a lot of folks love it, but maybe more have never used it before. So this is great, great chance to share something powerful. All right. So we'll go ahead and share those results. Looks like about 70% have not tried yet. So feel free to share more, Stacey. Okay. So I am obviously in the love it camp. So Flipgrid, there's two main things that you can do in Flipgrid. One is that you can record, um, sorry, you can have students record responses. So it comes in all like a grid of student replies. I'm not gonna focus on that today, even though that is amazing. I use it in my math class all the time for students to explain their math thinking. Um, and I don't use, they don't use any special whiteboarding or anything like that. They just use a phone and they hover it over their piece of paper and they talk about their math solutions and it's all posted on one big grid. But what I'm gonna talk about today is more of like the teacher created, um, portion here since that is the focus of our session today. So when you're in Flipgrid, and this is free, free available for everybody, there is something called the shorts camera, and that is to record a short video. You can record up to 10 minutes in here. So when I record a short, that's going to be, that's going to do my whole screen recording and provide me with a whiteboard. I, this is super simple. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my effects. I know I'm covering a lot rather quickly. So here we go. And you can choose a board and I can choose a whiteboard. What you can do here is you can also split the screen. So I could be like in the side of the video or I can just be like, I want only a whiteboard. And again, I have some different types of paper that I can choose from. And then all I have to do is press the record button. And now it's actually recording everything that I do. So I can go ahead and I can open up a pen tool. I can change the color of my pen and I can get to drawing. So it's very simple, very quick. I would just have this one screen. I can always pause if I needed to. I could reset my screen so I could delete everything. Um, you can even in here, just to let you know, uh, there is a record screen feature in here if you ever wanna use that that um, to record your screen, if I didn't already give you enough options, right? But what happens is once you make this, let me go and to notes. I'm actually recording everything that I do. So I can go ahead and I can open up a pen tool. All right, so if you made a little mistake, there is a very simple editor here where you can like and double, actually record. sorry, you can double click and you can, you know how you can trim like the beginning or end of the video, you're able to do that here. So I can do that. I can confirm and now it's say you forgot to add a clip, you can add more or you want multiple boards, you can do that. Another way that I really like to use this um, is to, again, just upload a little image. So maybe I have an image of a graph and then I can just draw on that graph. Let me show you how you do that. Add more. I can go ahead into my effects and I can use the photo and you can go ahead and upload a screenshot, maybe from your textbook or whatever it may be. And then you would be able to just ink on top of it. How you can ink on top of it again is you just go into these drawing tools right here. Um, and that's really, that's really it. I won't show you all the fancy frames that you can do, which the kids love, you know, all that good stuff. And then um, when you're all done, you go to next, next, you can title it if you want. You choose a cover photo. So let's just choose something from the middle there. There we go. Confirm. <laughs> Great image. And the beauty of this is it's going to generate a link for me right now. And that's the link that I share with my students. That's it. And now this is a video. 
there's nothing else to do. There's no uploading, there's no downloading. This is a quick whiteboard style video. I guess it's preparing it still. Um, that's it. See, it's available already. That's it. And now it's actually So I'll just stick with that. There's so much more in Flipgrid that you can do, but I'll stick with the simple. Again, if I talked about that too quickly and this is the option that you're like, oh, this is great, simple. Let's get started with that one. Um, I have a little video tutorial on how to set up your Flipgrid, how to get started with that also. Um, all right, so I wanna leave plenty of time for that Q&A, like you said. The last piece, which I'm not gonna get in today, but I just wanted to present is um, the, the last piece of like, how do we engage our students during class? Because this is more like instructional stuff that we do. Um, but what do you do during class time to make sure that all students are really participating? I'm really lucky in that I actually have a class set of these Wacom tablets. So you can see my students writing with the Wacom tablet. I pair this up with Pear Deck um, and Pear Deck is a add-on for Google Slides. It's also available for, um, for PowerPoint online and it allows me to see the work of all different students in this dashboard view in real time. And um, this is how I was how I was using it now where students don't actually have a tablet. I'm just doing the writing with my tablet. Students can still like circle and answer so I can see if students are all trying, if they're all responding, um, if they're giving it some effort and then I can kind of you know, write out my reply. Um, and so the only reason that I bring this up is that we might have an opportunity to bring you all another webinar. So we just wanted to gauge some interest um, to see if you would be interested in learning more about like that class discussion piece, learning more specifically about how I use Pear Deck. Uh, we could probably, we could definitely do a whole webinar on that. Um, so we're gonna do a quick little um, survey right after the session ends to see if that is something that you are interested in. I'm going to just close uh, with this quote. And I really believe if we empower students with the resources they need and coach them through the process of using the, these tools, then students can take ownership for their learning. And that's where the real magic happens. Um, and so for me, flipping my classroom, giving my students all the resources through the video that I prepared them with before they even walk into class, oh my gosh, it's been so transformational. I really didn't even get to talk about my flipped classroom, kind of how um, that's transformed my teaching. I assign my videos through a tool where I can see how students are watching the videos. I can embed questions in the videos. I come to class prepared because I know what students need. And that has been really transformational for me. But of course, the first step is knowing how to make the videos. So hopefully you got some ideas today um, and we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. Of course, I want to share that code for you all to get, um, a discount on a Wacom product. Uh, thank you again to Wacom for offering this discount for everybody joining today. So there are a lot of different products to explore. Um, so this link will be dropped into the chat. I see Jeremy's already done that, thank you. Um, and you can explore the different devices that are available and you would save 10% with the code that's available there. All right, should we dig into the Q&A? Let's do it. And I'm about to give you a huge shout out, Stacey, because I know you can't see it, but there is so much love pouring in in the question section saying, best professional development ever. I've learned more in 40 minutes. Than I learned in like 40 hours of traditional training. So thank you for being really, really actionable with the kinds of tools that teachers can use tomorrow um, wherever their students are. But let's, let's back up one little bit here. Um, yes. Because at the very beginning of the session, Michael wanted to know, what do these tablets even look like? Like, what does it look like when a teacher uses it? If you don't mind holding up yours, just give folks yeah. a sense of how it looks and how it feels. Okay, so this is the one um, that's really portable. This is the Intuos one. This is a small Intuos. So it's the one that you're seeing like on my screen share actually right now, it's a small one, the one all the way on the right. And so this is the Bluetooth version of it. And so literally, you know, you just press the button to turn it on and off and it's Bluetooth enabled. And then when I am using the pen here, 
Um, it works exactly like a huge mouse pad, okay? So you think of this as a mouse pad. So like this top left corner corresponds to the top left of my screen. And this top, the bottom right is like the bottom right of my screen. So wherever I'm positioning my pen is where I'm gonna be writing on the screen. And so then I have a pen. So it mimics exactly, it's like a giant mouse pad and I'm able to write with the pen. So that's this style of tablet. I don't see my screen. I have to like look up at my screen to see where I'm writing. So you might be thinking this is so difficult. Here's what I found. My students all have one of these. I have a classroom set of these. Um, it takes about a month. So the first time they use it, they're like, what is this thing? How am I supposed to write with this? It does take about a month to get used to it, to get used to like where you're writing on the screen. You're not dragging it like a mouse, but you're actually just writing on the part of the screen. But once you get used to it um, and you can't see, but like there's these little grids on it too. So it's easy to like align and write straight. Um, it's really helpful to have those little grid lines. I use it a lot. There's also little buttons here if like you need to click um, and to use it as like a right click or something. So you really can use this as to navigate um, anything that you need. And then, um, yeah, I found you get used to it in about a month and the writing on this is so wonderful. Like this is used by artists. Um, so it's way more than I need as a math teacher, but it feels wonderful. It feels like you're writing on a piece of paper, which is what I love. And then the other one. so. What I use more often, especially now since I'm at home, this is the Wacom One. So it is like, okay, let's see, much bigger. Wow. <laughs> it's 13 inches, okay, um, this one. And this is a pen display style one. I don't have it plugged in right now because I just didn't want to like, I was afraid with all these people on that I was going, my internet would lag or something when I had too many screens plugged in. I have so many things plugged into my computer right now. So that's why I don't have it on, but pretty much I keep this thing on plugged in all the time into my computer. So again, you plug it in with a USB um, into your computer. So you plug it in with the USB. You also do have to power this one into a wall. So that's just something to know. But if you're making videos, so you can see like kind of on my screen here, um, this would be the image. It's mirroring your screen. It's just like if you're in a classroom and you have a projector. You know how it mirrors exactly what's on your screen? That's exactly how this works. So it is like a second display and you're able to see what you're writing on. So it's it feels a lot more comfortable. I mean, I definitely like my Wacom One, um, what I use more often. Um, it's totally what I use for, all right, so I use it for making my videos. I also use it for grading student work. So grading student work, I actually use Kami. Students just turn in a PDF. I open it, I open up the PDF in Kami and I'm able to hand write all over it. Oh, I'm cool. also able to leave video comments. I'm able to leave voice comments because we have a paid subscription to Kami. Um, it's a huge tool. If your school already has it and you haven't explored it yet, I really recommend checking it out. If you have any questions, I have like a video library on Kami itself, um, but I use it for that. I use it for lesson planning um, and I use it as like my daily like notes because I can just mind map whatever I want to do. And I'm using my Wacom One for that because I'm plugged in pretty much all the time right now. So I hope that helps. Cool, cool. that's great. And so. You know, the next obvious follow-up question is like, hey, this looks amazing, but Max and others want to know, does it work with my platform, with my tools? In general, are these compatible with like Macs, PCs, Chromebooks? Do you know about that? Yeah, great question. It is compatible with Macs and PCs. Um, it is not compatible with Chromebooks. Okay, got it. And then you were showing so many of these applications, whether it was Jamboard or Kami, I assume pretty much anything where you're on a Mac and a PC and you have a document that you're interacting with, you can use the tablet on it, is that right? Yeah, so again, any of these Wacom devices, think of it as like how your, if your mouse currently works with the program and you're able to currently like press the pen tool and draw with a mouse and you know the unpleasant experience of trying to do that, then with the Wacom, you just literally now have a pen that you're writing, like you are writing on the screen. So think of it as your mouse pad with a pen. Cool, cool, that's really helpful. And then I think the elephant in the room question 
comes from Janetta who says, hey, I want one of these so bad, but how do I afford it? Um, have you heard about teachers using Donors Choose or other platforms to make this more available to their classrooms? Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, people have, people have asked their schools too. I know um, a lot of schools are providing them this year. Um, so the, again, if you wanted to ask for the most affordable option, the Wacom Intuos line would be um, the one that I would go for there. Um, and honestly, I would ask for the Bluetooth one because it's only like $10 more for the Bluetooth versus the wired one. And it's something, th this is my thing. And I've talked to some teachers about this who want to ask their school about it. This is not a device that we are using just now because of remote learning. Not at all. I mean, I've been using these devices for years and years and years. Um, this is a device that's going to amp up our classroom in all different ways. There's so many ways we can use it. We can use it in class. We can use it before class to, um, you know, make our flip classroom led videos. We can also use it post class to grade student work, to make everything be in one space for students. There's also a lot of benefit to having all of this saved for students in their Google Drive or whatever it may be, because don't forget, if you are making this digital work and you're saving it for them in a digital way, giving them that digital feedback, now it becomes searchable. So that's something else that's really powerful. So again, I've, I've talked a little bit about Cami today, but Cami is what I, I use and I grade the student work in that too. And this has OCR, optical character recognition, and that means that anything that's on here even like handwritten stuff becomes searchable super powerful there so um i that's what i would say is like this is not something that we're going to just be using this year not to mention so i showed you some of the newer wacom products right now but i'm being completely honest here i'm not just saying this because you know wacom's here with me but the class set of tablets that i showed you like this class set here, you can see that this tablet looks different than the one I showed you. That's because this is an older version. I got this class set in 2013. It is still going strong. I'm still using the same class set of, of tablets since 2013. Like what other technology are you using seven years later and it works just as well as it, you, as it worked on day one? And that's the, I think the power of these things is because like it's not tied to an operating system or anything like that. You just plug it in to your computer um, and you know, like worst case scenario, now the USB doesn't plug in and I need a USB-C adapter. Like that's really the only difference, but they have true staying power. These things are built to last. Um, and so it's going to be, uh, to me, an investment for, if you're making an argument to your school, it's an investment for your school. Very cool. Well, speaking of staying power, I'm seeing so many questions about battery life. Because I think here in 2020, our phones are dying, our iPads are dying. We can't even um, get enough chargers to plug everything in. What's the battery life on these things? I don't know what the battery life is on the Intuos, the Bluetooth one. It lasts a really long time. I mean, I, I really don't know. I just plug it in occasionally. I, it's not like it's not going to run out during my class day. Um, it also doesn't stay on the whole time. So I don't worry about that. The Wacom one has to be plugged into the wall all the time. So there's that. And then the class set that I have is the one where um, they plug it in. So I've never run into that before because it doesn't, there's no battery. So I don't, I don't know the exact specs on how long the battery lasts. Very cool. Um, I see a lot of questions coming in about like using this for specific use cases. I know you're a math teacher, but um, you know, if you were imagining a teacher, especially in a special, special education environment, who wants to use it to really energize their students during this very difficult time, are there any tips you might recommend to really use this to engage and harness the creativity of their students? Yeah. Um... Okay, so the, I guess the first thing that I really believe in, I really do believe in the power of handwriting, both for students and for us as teachers. So for example, when I make my flipped classroom videos, I'm always writing as I'm talking. Um, I've seen some people, they feel like their videos look a little bit more professional when they write it all out ahead of time because their handwriting looks neater. They're, you know, like they're kind of scripting it. They're able to write and then talk. For me, students follow as I'm writing. So I like to write and talk 
because they're doing the same and I want them to be taking notes and they're able to kind of see how I'm working through the flow of that problem. So I think there's huge power in being able to write and talk. So um, like to me, a lot of times I think that making a lesson where I kind of have, maybe even I'm just using the Jamboard very simply, and I have a little bit of bullet points, but then I have, I'm writing as I'm talking, I'm writing out some bullet points there. I think it's more engaging because students are seeing something on the screen um, versus just the flat text. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and even if you just like draw little images as you're going, uh, that can be really powerful too. So um, I think it's auto sketch that it's like, is that what it's called? I really like that because auto draw, that's what it's called. Obviously it's saved in my thing because like you can be sketching as you're doing class. I don't use it in my math class, but it recognizes what you're doing. So like if I start drawing something, um, yeah. it will recognize it so I can have terrible drawing and be like, oh yeah, I was trying to draw a van. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, again, so it can just be like the power of having some visuals so students can see um, that. And maybe you could allow them to, you know, you could pass a tablet around and allow them to sketch note. I think that's something else that can be really powerful, having students summarize um, what they're learning through sketches and little um, annotations. So again, you could have them here drawing and then also they can use just the regular draw tool here and they can actually hand write there. That wouldn't be auto-recognized. This magical one is the one that's going to auto-recognize whatever you're writing. So uh, yeah, that could be just a simple, really powerful tool. Yeah, I think that's powerful for every student, like especially in this moment when we're all apart to bring more visuals, more sort of eye-catching moments into our uh, teaching is so powerful. Um, what about for younger students? Again, I know that you teach older students in your day job, but have you heard about teachers using this successfully with younger students, especially if you're giving them the tablets and asking them to input their own handwriting? Yeah, um, so I am lucky. I work at a K-12 school, so I get to see the younger kids in our lower school grades. Um, all of our students are actually using Seesaw. So if your school is using Seesaw, it's already built in there that they're able to draw on anything. They're able to actually draw and record at the same time so they can talk out their math thinking or whatever thinking that they are doing. And if you're able to pass out the tablet, then they can really practice the writing also, um, which can be you know, super powerful. For our youngest students, they do, um, I will say that they do very well with just using a mouse. Um, and usually what they're drawing is rather simple. So maybe they're drawing some shapes or you're trying to help them like learn about counting and that's one of the most difficult things right now. Um, I also have a niece that's six years old and, and she's also using Seesaw. And sometimes we get on the video and we do it together and it's like, she's trying to add the numbers and she, she's doing really well with it, but sometimes she just needs those visuals. So we're able to either draw them out Sometimes I, I tell my sister to go get her some crackers so that she can she can pull those up too. Uh, and but you know you could even take a picture of some of those, pull them into seesaw or whatever it is, and then use the pen to cross things out. To I think that's the power, like starting to verbalize your thinking process. So whether that's a student or you as the teacher who has a device and you're able to really make it visual to students what's going on and again not just like a powerpoint presentation with some fancy animations i personally just find those harder to follow i need to see the writing the flow um i also need to be doing the writing um that to me like i cannot i i don't know about other math teachers i cannot like type a math solution i like when i'm doing my solutions i have to handwrite it totally maybe i'll type it up afterwards but I can't think like that. There's something about the like the sketching, the doodling that actually unlocks your brain in a powerful way. 
Um, yeah. I also don't think completely linearly. Yeah. I think that's it too. Like with all these whiteboarding apps, we can be writing in different spaces on the screen and it doesn't have to be so linear. So we really can map information together and help our students understand how all this stuff webs together. I think that's why I liked the awe app that I showed you too, because you can have like, you can be writing here and here and here and here, and then you can zoom out and see that web all come together, make those connections. Very cool. Well, speaking of making connections, you've connected so many educators across the country tonight, Stacey, um, to each other, to awesome opportunities in their classrooms. So I have to thank you so much on behalf of this audience. Um, that being said, any final words of wisdom as folks get ready for the end of the year and the start of a new one? Oh my gosh, right? Um, I, first, I just want to say thank you to everybody who is on this call today because I know how much everybody's already doing right now and then taking the time out this evening to just further grow as an educator. I mean, this is why I love teachers. Uh, when I first started teaching, I was like, I know I'm in the right profession as soon as I saw how generous educators are and um, just like that love of learning. So I really appreciate you being here um, and everything that you know you all are doing right now in the classroom and trying to make it all work. Um, if I can help in any way, please do reach out. Um, again, my information is here. Um, contact information is on my blog. Also, if you are on Twitter, I'm very active on Twitter and you can go ahead and leave me a message and I will definitely respond back to you. If you click on any of the videos that I shared today, uh, again, they're also in the PDF that you can take home later. If you watch some of those videos that I have on YouTube and you um, have a question, please just put it in the comments on YouTube. I definitely get to all of my YouTube comments. So um, that's sometimes the easiest way, you know, you're watching and you're like, well, what do I do here? Um, just let me know because as I said, I just wish that I could have come to this today and said like, these are the three apps that you need, um, but that wouldn't be me being real. Um, me being real is trying to find what you're doing at your school already and offering a solution that's going to work well for you and your students. Even though I might have a favorite one, that might not be what's best for you and your setting. So I hope that the variety of tools kind of got you thinking, and then you will be able to click on one of them, zone in on that. And as you do, and as questions come up, please do reach out um, and I'll do my best to answer. Cool, well, thank you so much, Stacey. And thank you again to everyone for joining tonight. Just as a quick recap, um, you will get an email with a recording of the session as well as Stacey's PDF. You'll get a link to that generous discount offered by Wacom. And everyone who joined live will automatically be entered into a drawing for one of five Wacom tablets, and we'll notify those winners shortly. Um, in the meantime, thank you, as Stacey said, for all that you do. We wish you a tremendous conclusion to the year and a great start to 2021. And we can't wait to see all the incredible things you do next based on some of these awesome tips. Thank you so much, Stacey, and good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.